Here we are in Deuteronomy chapter 13 and beginning at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and beginning at verse 6. What I want to talk about on this morning is the cost of discipleship. I want to talk about the cost uh, of discipleship. We'll begin in Deuteronomy chapter 13 and beginning at verse 6. One of the things we have identified already is that God has called us to be disciples. And so uh, one of the things that we have consistently said throughout this series is that all uh, disciples are Christians, not all Christians are disciples. In order to be a Christian, you have to believe that Jesus died for you, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And you have to commit your life to Jesus Christ, to following in his steps and obeying his commands. And so you must be willing to confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized. And once you're baptized, all your sins are washed away. At that point, you are a Christian and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? So, matter of fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, the Holy Spirit is confirmation that you are a child of God, that you are a Christian. And so, once you obey the gospel and you follow those steps, you are, you are a Christian. But in order to to be a disciple, it requires much more. And so in order to be a disciple, a disciple is a daily decision that when you wake up in the morning, Jesus, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to watch what I think. I'm going to watch what I say. I'm going to watch where I go. I'm going to watch who I slap. I'm going to watch where I, uh, where I engage in. All of these things, you are making daily decisions that, Lord, I'm going to walk with you. It's hard being a disciple because it requires focus and concentration. Matter of fact, in order to be a Christian, that is a decision that you make on a day. But in order to be a disciple, that is an every morning decision. Some of you, uh, you, you consider yourself, you look at yourself as a great person. Some of you, matter of fact, if you would describe yourself, you would say, I'm a nice person, I'm a great person. Uh, and that's the narrative that you would give yourself uh, if you had to talk about yourself and you think, you really think that you are a great person in order for you to be fabulous. Some of you wake up and you tell yourself certain things and I don't want to uh, deter that. I'm not trying to change that. Uh, whatever you say to yourself, that's your business. Some people wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, I'm fabulous. And that's how you feel about yourself. And you don't let nobody else say anything otherwise because you say to yourself, I'm fabulous and I'm wonderful. And I'm, uh, some of you say you're a 10. Some of you say that you're a 10, right? Some, so, some of you grade yourself. Uh, and don't let nobody else give you another number than the number that you've given yourself. You say you're a 10, then that's what you are. Now, don't ask nobody if that's true. Uh, but if that's the number that you give, then that's what you go for the rest of the uh, rest of the day. In order for you to be the great person that you think you are, notice there is a regiment. There is a routine that you have. And the regiment and the routine uh, that you have is uh, you wake up in the morning and you brush your teeth and you wash your face. Uh, you get your clothes laid out and you're going to wear this outfit with these boots and you're going to wear that suit with that tie and then what you do is you wear the some of you have uh, on your in your bathroom some of you have like your favorite uh, uh, perfume right uh, and matter of fact when you want to kill it today when you want to kill it today you say I'm wearing that one <laughs> I'm wearing that one that, that one right there it slays everybody that one right there it put everybody down and then there, there are some of you that say you know what uh, and when I'm really feeling good and I have a little extra change uh, there's a nail salon matter of fact when you walk in they already know what shade what set, uh, you know, you already know who to talk to. Uh, uh not you, huh? No, 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 not you. I don't want, I don't want none of y'all. I want, that's the one that was. And, and you, ha you have an idea and it's a certain regiment. It's a certain routine. It's a certain system that you, uh, that you consistently do to maintain the image that you think you have of yourself. Matter of fact, there are some of you say, hey, listen, uh, I do my walk. Some of you do your massages. Some of you go to the gym. Some of you have your hair stylist. Some of you go to a certain store or whatever the case may be, because that keeps up that certain image of you. So when somebody looks at you, they say, yeah, that's you. They can tell when you're going down because you walk differently. Uh, your, your smell is off. Uh, and, you know, they, they, they look at you and say, hey, what, what's going on? They can tell that you're depressed. They can tell that you're not really feeling great about yourself because you off your routine. But boy, when that check hit and things go well and you got a few little things that's lined up, matter of fact, 
You know exactly who to call. You know exactly what to put on. You know exactly what to wear. You know exact. You know exactly what kind of uh, food because that that represents you. What I'm saying is, in order to be a disciple, it's a routine. If you're a Christian and you don't have a routine, you're probably just a root, uh, Christian. Because in order to be a disciple, it requires a daily regimen. Some of you would say this, and we're, talk, and we're dealing with the cost of discipleship. Some of you would say this when it pertains to uh, you personally. Some, some of you would say, oh, it costs to look this good. Some of you say, this, this, you don't just wake up in the morning and glow like this. No, 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 this, this, you got to go get Vaseline. You got to go, <laughs> it costs to look uh, uh, this good. What I'm trying to tell you is, it costs to be a disciple. And the question that you got to ask yourself on this morning is, are you willing to pay it? Find out what Jesus wants. Find out what the cost is and pay it. You have to be willing to pay it. And so one of the things is uh, that we understand in scripture is that God is the same today, right? But he's also the, he's, he was also the same yesterday. So one of the things I can do is I can look at yesterday and I can see how God is. And then that, that way I can apply today and see what God uh, and what standard God would have it for me. And that way, if I can understand that I can get it down today, then the Bible also says that God is the same forever, right? For tomorrow. So that means that lets me know I see the standard. So that's why it's important to study the Old Testament. You want to go back to the Old Testament because you want to be able to identify the standard. Standard. Once you identify the standard, then you can come in today and say, okay, now I know what I need to do today. And once you understand what you know you need to do today, then that should give you a projection of what the next year is supposed to be, right? So here we are. We're going we're gonna to do all three and find out what the cost. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the past, and then we're going to look at the present, and then we're going to have a projection in the future. Please turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 13. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, and I want us to begin at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 13 and verse 6. Now, God is preparing the children of Israel. Now, we don't live in this time, right? This is the Old Testament. This is under a different covenant. Same God, different people. We're not studying the people so much as we're studying God, because once I understand who God is and what his standard is, it's important for each and every one of you to have a standard. Matter of fact, in order for you to know what people that you need to remove or, or invite into your life, you look at your standard and then that will tell you who to say yes and, and no to. There are some people that probably have entered into your life that have should have ne- you should have never introduced, you should have never given your number, you should have never opened the door, and the only reason that you open the door. The only reason they entered into your life is because you didn't first check your standard. And if you would have checked your standard, you would have realized, hey, they don't even qualify. And so Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 6 is God letting them know, hey, if you want to be with me, this is the standard. So I want you to read Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 6 as God educating these people. If you want to be with me, I need to let you know how much this is going to cost you. Amen. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get mad and saying it's a lot. Because if it's a lot to be with God, it just may it it may mean that you don't have enough. You don't you don't you don't go to uh, to the Chanel uh, talk and and walk around talking about y'all purses. It costs too much. (laughs) You know what they would tell you in the side? I think this is the wrong. And this is what they hand on your back. It's, it's the, I think this is, this, this really ain't the, you can't go in a Louis Vuitton store and talk about this is real. This is a house note. This is not, this place is not, if this is shocking you, if this is a lot for you, then you probably want to go, <laughs> go to another establishment. I want to let you know that what you're about to read, what you're about to read, what you're about to read, some of you may have never read this before. It may seem like a lot. And just because you haven't read it doesn't mean that God has not always expected it. Right? So the the work that we have to do is, oh, I'm sorry, God, I didn't know that that was the standard. Right? Here we are in verse 6. Are you excited? I'm excited. I love the word. Okay, here we go. If thy brother, the son of your mother, or your son, ain't ain't he catching everybody? (laughs) Or your daughter, 
uh, or the wife of your bosom. I mean, she in there, she in your heart. <laughs> I'm talking about she, she in your heart. The wife of thy bosom or your friend, which is as thine own soul. Uh, Brother William, what is that? I mean, y'all best friends. If any one of them, did we try to cover everybody? Yeah. I want to read it again because I don't want you to miss it. If your brother, the son of thy mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, if any one of them whom you would love try to entice thee, secretly and they come to you God is setting a standard and he says this if they come to you and they try to whisper to you and this is what they say the Bible says they say let us go and let us serve other gods let's go to another faith let's let's uh, let's 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 try another religion Let's, um, you know, I, I, I'll go to church with you on Sunday, but hey, next week, come to the temple with me. I do, I do some sage and we do some spiritual work. You know, come, hey, I'll come to your faith and you come and explore my faith, right? This is, this is the conversation. He says, if any one of your loved ones come to you, I don't care if it's your son, it can be your daughter telling you, mama, come on, let's, Let's try this. I want to I wanna expose you to this. The Bible says, which thou hast not known. They bringing up some other religion, some other faith. Before we go any further, I need you to understand God is a jealous God. The Lord don't let you, the, the Lord don't like anybody. I don't even want you looking at another faith, looking at another God. Don't you be flirting with nobody else. Don't even be considering. We were just talking. Ain't no just talking. I'm jealous. Get in the car. <laughs> Let us go and serve other gods which thou hast not known you nor your fathers. Verse 7. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you. Somebody say, you know, you ain't the only faith. There's some others. There's some other stuff out here. Hey, you know what you should do? You know what you should do? You should kind of go around and kind of explore and kind of see what's out here. People try to do that with children sometimes and say, you don't, don't get too serious too soon. Why don't you go out here and, and, and find out what's out here? You mess around and come back with something. You mess around and find out ain't nothing out there and you didn't waste it life. You got your heart broken crying. Hmm. Namely, <laughs> verse 7, namely of the gods of the people which are around about you. They're close to you. they nigh unto you. They're close to you. Or they're, they're far off from you. Sometimes it looks appealing because you're wondering, what's they doing over there? From the one end of the earth, even unto the other end of the earth. Verse 8. You shall not consent to, to him, nor hearken unto him. Notice this, neither shall thine eye pity him. So I want to break down verse 8, right? The first phrase of verse 8 says, if you got somebody who's trying to pull you away from me, or, or pull you to go look at something else, I don't even want you looking at nothing else. So if you ever get an invitation, even if it's a secret invitation, he says, the first thing that I want you to do is don't consent with him. You got to reject them on the spot. I don't do that. Hey, come on. We just going to go out. We just going to, let's just kind of see. Mm -mm, I don't see because I already have, I already have someone. So I don't need to go out and see. I don't need to go look at anything. I don't need to scroll. I don't need to explore. I don't need to even do that because once you open up your spirit, you then allow other spirits to get in. And so the Bible, the Bible says in verse eight, he says, don't consent unto him. And then it says this, 
The Bible gives you permission. Don't hearken. Hearken means listen. That means I'm not even going to let you finish your pitch to me. Stop, 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 stop talking to me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Because what I, what I hear you, uh, 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 are, are there any loyal people in, in the room? Amen. Amen. Okay, it's three. It's three. It's three. <laughs> you're in a good place. You, you're in the church. Okay. Uh, if you're a loyal person, if you're a loyal person uh, and you have a friend, let's say you have a friend and let's say you're real loyal, you don't even let anybody start talking about your friend. You know what I, mm -mm, mm -mm, what, no, no, I don't even like the tone in which you're talking. I don't even like what, you, what you're saying. What, what, what the Lord is looking for is you don't even let anybody finish pitching to you about another God. You stop them mid-sentence and say, stop. You don't consent and you stop listening. And then he says this, neither shall thine eye do what? Don't feel sorry for nobody. Don't, matter of fact, in order to pity somebody, you kind of have to kind of look at them and kind of look at their situation and be like, well, you know what? They kind of got a good heart. I, I, you know, they, I think they're kind. I, th I think they're this. Or I, I think they're that. He said, hey, listen, don't even pity. Don't feel sorry for nobody. What he's saying, the word pity means, and what he implies is, fix your emotions to the point where you don't feel like adjusting to anybody and allowing your emotions to lead you. Be strong. He says, neither shall I pity him, neither shall you spare, neither shall you conceal him. Uh, you know how some people come to you, sometimes they'll say, uh, somebody said uh, that you were doing X, Y, and Z. And the question that you ask is, who, who said that? This is a, who, who said that? And then they said, well, I, I don't want to, I don't want to say, and they want to talk about the issue, but they don't want to reveal the person who said it. You know what the Lord said? We in the text. <laughs> Neither shall you conceal him. Hey, don't hide. Don't, don't, try to, don't try to hide the person who, who brought, hey, that person who said it, and even though they came to you secretly, the Bible said, go ahead, expose that person. Man. This person right here was trying to get me to walk away from God. He said, don't hide it. Because sometimes you protect the person that's going around secretly poisoning the environment. So he says this in verse 9. He says, uh, this is the hard part. This is the hard part. We just still we still in the Bible. I know this is still this rough. This rough part. Uh, verse nine. Uh, but you should surely kill him. Uh, we in a new <laughs> we in a New Testament now. So I just want to let you know. <laughs> some of y'all some of y'all packing up your Bible right now. Nah, I know who to go. I need to go. <laughs> I know exactly the first person I need to go see. It's the Old Testament. <laughs> The Bible says in verse 9, but you should surely kill him. <laughs> Brother Williams, what's, what's the principle we pull from this? You didn't know how serious God was about you being dedicated to him and how God feels about anybody who's wishy-washy and on the fence. He said, hey, listen, if anybody tries to get you to leave me, this is what you do. We need to be open. You know, this is the 21st century. We need to be open and explore. God says, mm -mm, my disciples don't, we ain't, they ain't open like that. They're not open like that and we don't explore. It's my family, these are my children, these are my disciples, they with me. And I don't want anybody coming around them. I don't want anybody considering, thinking that there is something better out there other than me. God is very confident with himself. Now, I'm the greatest that you ever going to experience. So when you leave me, you just know you're going down. <laughs> Ain't that how some of y'all feel about this? <laughs> he says, but you should surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him 
to put them to death. Now here's, here's what the, the Lord required in the Old Testament. They finna die. Notice what they did. You, you're about to die, but you had to be the first one to touch them. You couldn't get somebody else to do it. Notice what the requirement, thine hand shall be the first. Why is the Lord requiring that? Don't get somebody else, don't, 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 don't shove it off to somebody else. Hey, don't you conceal them? You have to expose them. Matter of fact, you know what this kind of aligns up with? This kind of aligns up with uh, Matthew 18, uh, Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, the Lord requires that if somebody is not living right or doing something, you have to go to them on your own and you had to be the first to initiate it. You can't delegate that to somebody else. He says this in Deuteronomy 13, thine hand shall be the first upon him to be put to death. And afterwards, then everybody else can get a little peace. I mean, everybody else finna get in there, but we can't get in there until you, until you throw the first one, right? And then he's very specific at how this happens. The Bible says in verse 10, and you shall stone them with stones uh, so that he, the Lord even knew how I want this to end. Can you pass me that? That's, no, no, not, not that stone, the other stone, just like that. <laughs> they had to go get stones. <laughs> they, they had to go get, no, no, <laughs> I'm playing. Uh, <laughs> They had to go get stones. They, they had to go get stones. And he said, stone them with stones that he may die. Amen. Why, Lord? Let's look at the text. Because he has sought to thrust thee away from the Lord. This person needs to end because they were trying to take you from me. You can't be my friend and you can't be connected to me if you trying to take what I have away from me. You're not a friend. You're not a loved one. And so he says, uh, because he have sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt and from the what? I did all of these things for you. I've taken care of you, and now that I have crossed you over, and now you're in a better place, now these individuals want to come and tell you to be open-minded and explore other things? God said, that's why they must be removed, right? Now, God is the same what? Today, yesterday, and, okay, so we looked at the God of yesterday. And God is serious about his children staying with him. Be with me. And don't allow anyone or any mother, son, brother, friend, whoever, don't let anybody get in your ear and convince you that I'm not the greatest. Don't let anybody entice you and try to pull you away from me. Right now, what what happens is that starts to affect relationships, because sometimes there are people that you love and those people don't love God. They don't love God at the level that you love God. And so now you are in between relationships where you're saying, based upon the relationship that I have, I'm supposed to love my father. I'm supposed to love my mother. I'm supposed to love my my son or my daughter. I'm supposed to love my husband and my wife. I'm supposed to love them. But sometimes there are people who, who find themselves between a rock and a hard place because the people that you love, the, 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 the children, the family members, the man that you love, the, the woman that you love is kind of pulling you away from God. Now here you are on Saturday trying to make a decision. Do I please my my woman or do I get up and go to worship? If you find yourself in that situation, uh, you gotta let you gotta let somebody go. If somebody asks you as you're on your way to the Lord's house, where are you going? That's the wrong question to be asking me on Sunday morning where I'm going. You know what the real question is? Why are you not going? 
If you don't know where I'm going on, sir, maybe I'm doing a bad job of explaining to you who I am. I am a disciple of Christ. My routine is the same. Somebody said, you gonna worship on Sunday? Don't ask me if I'm gonna worship on Sunday. Where else would I be? Where, where else would I be? At this hour, at this time, on the Lord's day, where else will I be? Kroger? <laughs> Brunch? Where, where else would I be if I'm a disciple of Christ? If I'm a disciple of Christ, I don't have another option. I know how serious he is about his children being with him. God don't like anything or anyone getting in between us and him. Amen? Now, now we're going to go to the present, right? Uh, now we're going to go to the present and the scripture that applies uh, us today uh, in Luke chapter 14. Turn your Bible to Luke chapter 14 and let's look at verse 25. Luke chapter 14. And we'll look at verse 25. And the Bible reads, And there went great multitudes, Luke chapter 14 and verse 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and he said unto them. So if you look at verse 25, Jesus has a crowd, the multitude is with him. What Jesus is about to do is Jesus is about to do some teaching on what it costs to be a disciple. Y'all with me, right? Now, I have a reflection of the Old Testament in Deuteronomy where God gives a, a glimpse of what he wants and what he desires from us. Stay with me and do not entertain, engage with, or accommodate anybody who wants you to go in a different direction, right? Before we move on, one of the things that you need to evaluate with all of your relationships, the question that you gotta ask yourself is, because of this relationship, am I, am I closer to God or am I further away? Sometimes you're farther away from God because of you. You have lost focus. It's not the person. Sometimes, sometimes we kick people out of our lives and we find ourselves in the same uh, uh, spiritual situation. Then you begin to realize that the people that you kicked out of their lives, they wasn't the problem, you was. They wasn't preventing you from getting closer to God. Uh, you just used them as an excuse. So sometimes the problem is you. Another perspective is um, sometimes the problem is, is with other people. Uh, 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 when you get with certain people, when you get with certain people, you got to know certain people bring certain things out of you. You got to know that. Uh, matter of fact, for some of y'all, if you, if you wanted to laugh, if you wanted to laugh, there's a person in your phone right now that you would hit up and call and be like, hey, well, I want to have a good time. Uh, if, if some of you had a problem and you wanted to sift through and you, you needed somebody with some analytical skills, that's probably a person in your phone right now that you call, you don't hang out with them, you don't really laugh with them. This is the person that you call to bounce ideas from and they help you kind of see yourself. There's some people, um, you know, some of y'all got some brothers and sisters and, 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 uh, and family members. Uh, if something was to pop off today and, and I need to go ride, uh, I know who I would call. <laughs> some of y'all got some brothers and sisters they don't even ask no questions they'd be like your car or mine well, which, which one we doing right so there are certain people that bring certain things out of you and here's the thing sometimes you can be connected to people some, sometimes you can be connected to people that are wonderful to be around they make you feel good but spiritually they don't benefit you when you get around them, all of a sudden you get an urge to smoke and drink and cuss and you doing stuff and all of a sudden, and you, ha you end up having a great time, but they pull that thing out of you. And then you get around other people and they make you want to pick up a book. They make you want to go work out. They make you want to go uh, start a podcast and they make you, and all of a sudden you want to start going to conferences and get your life together. And then there's some people that you get around, they make you want to get an LLC. You weren't even thinking about an LLC, but now you want to get an LLC and start your business and all of a sudden, and then there's some other people that you get around and they make you want to pray. They make you want to say, thank you, God. Matter of fact, there's some people that you get around, they make you 
you feel like you need to repent, not because they're judging you. It is because their focus and their heart is so focused on God. You realize, oh, my goodness, I think I've been distracted and it make you want to get with there are some people that make you feel good but bring you spiritually far away from God and sometimes you got to make the hard decisions especially in this time of year when you start evaluating everything you start looking at everything you start asking yourself the question is this profiting me is this beneficial to me or, or am I about to have a ball but lose my soul because God's standard is so high, don't think that you can jog and think that God will just accept anything that you lay on the altar. I want the best of you and I want all of you. And if you can't run to me full speed, you can't go week in and week out uh, constantly in guilt, constantly repenting for the same sin, saying I'm sorry because there's something that's, there's something that's toxic about your environment that's not allowing you to have that breakthrough. You need to have that spiritual breakthrough and you can't have that spiritual breakthrough if you keep entertaining spirits that's not dedicated to God so you can tell a person this and I love you oh I love you in the in the bosom of my heart I love you I think I think you I think you got a great personality I have a, I have so much fun but if for some reason when our when our energy and our chemistry comes together there are some of you can say some of you you had some people leave your life and you are a worse version of yourself. The reason why sometimes people have regret, sometimes people will leave your life and you realize, you know what? I, I was really getting myself together with this person. I took this person for granted. Sometimes it could be your mother. Sometimes it could be your friend. Sometimes it could be a church uh, 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 brother or a sister. Sometimes it can be somebody that you, in, in the season, they were getting on your nerves, but then you have a flashback and realize the reason why they were getting on my, uh, my nerves is because they actually wanted the best for me. They were actually pushing me and trying to encourage me. They made me go back to school. They made me get my GED. They made me go to the doctor and I didn't want to go to the doctor and I, I started getting healthy and I started taking care of myself and I, and I end up moving and I end up getting a car and I end up getting a better job and sometimes when certain people leave your life you start realizing oh my goodness I'm going down and I wasn't on my way up because of me I was on my way up because of the person that I was connected to was actually bringing the best out of me and so sometimes that other lust, that other flesh gets a hold and you want to run to the people that actually mean you no good. You running with people that's not your friends. They talk about you behind your back. They say, oh man, they sabotage you along the way. They don't pray with you. They never send you any scriptures. They never talk about God, but they your best friend. They're there every time that you call, but when they show up, they show up with the devil. They show up with another spirit. And so uh, they're loyal or they're consistent and they're always there for you, but they never bring you closer to God. I'm not saying you don't have a great personality, but what I'm saying is I don't think you bring out the best in me. There's some people you can't be around. You ain't strong enough. Hey, <sighs> you got to get out of there. You ain't strong enough. Hey, I just want to see what you're doing. <sighs> Blue card, somebody give me a blue card. <laughs> There's some people you just not strong enough. There's a, there is a friend you can never say no to. There's a person right now, if he texts you right now, what you doing? All of a sudden your whole schedule is clear. <laughs> Knowing you got work to do. And you adjust to there because there are some people, there are some people, there are some personalities, they got your number. You strong with everybody else. You bold with everybody else. Everybody else, you talking about God. I love Jesus. But that one person, you can't have a Bible study with that one person. You can't bring up Jesus with that one person. Because it's something about that person and that chemistry and what they did to you and the combination. They know the combination. You try to change the combination. They got the new code and they coming in and they just keep coming in your life. And that door just keep opening up and you trying to close it. But then, then you get weak. It's like it's kryptonite. And there you go laying down. It just, and just, it's just sadness. And you say, I'm going to be strong. And then you know what you try to do? You try to test yourself and say, you know what? I didn't went to worship this morning. Brother Williamson talked about the cost and I didn't prayed and I 
ask the church for strength. And then, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go around that spirit again to see if I'm strong. <laughs> then you find out them scriptures don't last as long <laughs> after service. Right. And then some, well, for some of you, you have to get to the, you have to get to the place. There's just some people I got to cut off and I can't be around. You don't bring the best out of me. So because I can't say no to you, I actually just need to stop talking to you all together. Because my boundaries keep being compromised with you. This is probably our last conversation. I was trying to be strong. I can't be strong. You keep, you, you, you keep manipulating me. Every time I'm around you, I'm losing money. Keep asking for stuff. All of a sudden, I'm going above and beyond, and I'm the one getting hurt at the end of the day because I'm always trying to tend to your needs, and I find myself neglected. I don't like how I feel after I finish talking to you. There's some people you feel great when you're in their presence, but when, you, when they leave, you actually feel horrible about yourself. When they leave and you look in the, in the mirror and you just looking at yourself, it's you and you looking at yourself and you don't like the version of you when you're with them, something needs to change. Your self-esteem has plummeted. You feel like you can't pray. Sins have accumulated. You're walking around with guilt. All the stuff that you were supposed to do now has been pushed on the back burner because they have rearranged your schedule. What I'm trying to say is something needs to change. And God does not like anybody that comes into your life and causes you not to see him. If anybody comes into your life, they should be a magnifying glass to the point where you see God clearer. There's some people that can come in your life. You say, you know what? You are such a blessing. Have you ever said it to somebody? You are such a blessing. You know, ever since I met you, I've, you know what? You are such an encourager. You pray, I just feel like, you know what, this is, I feel great with this connection. There are some people, when they enter into your life, you can almost tell that God is in them because they magnify God. And when y'all get together, all y'all doing is talking about scripture and God and how good God is and how great is and how he has brought us over. And there are some people that are not even Christians, but because of their spirit and their personality, they're still a magnifying glass because you get an opportunity to share your faith with them and they have a desire to, to seek after God. So the connection is good. They're, they're not trying to go in a different direction. There are some people that tell you right now, don't get around me. I'm gonna mess up your whole life. <laughs> I'm toxic, you don't come over here. <laughs> and guess what? We ignore them and still come because you think you're strong enough, you can take it. I ain't scared. The Bible says in verse 25, and there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, verse 26, if any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, wife, don't this sound similar? It sounds like Old Testament. He given this list again. If any man want to come, what God says is, you want to be with me? Some of y'all, you know, you know how you give interviews? So you want to be with me? You want to be with me? If you, God said, you want to be with me? Well, let me tell you what it means to be with me. If any man come to me and he does not hate, for those of you taking notes, the word hate means to love less. Let me give you an imagery of, of love less, right? Uh, this, this word is also used in other uh, places of the Bible. Uh, some of you are familiar with the text. Uh, no man can serve to, to man. Either he will love the one or hate. So that word hate means to love less. It doesn't mean that I hate you and I did, uh, I'm coming for you. What it means is, um, what, what it means is to hate in, in this text means to demote. It, it, it means to, to, to do less. If you have a proper definition of the word love, right? So in, in, uh, especially in the King James Version, it would compare love and hate. So love, if you don't know what love is, but hate means to love less. Right? Love is not a feeling. Love is a behavior. For God so loved the world, he Okay, I know God loves me because of what he 
Okay, so uh, for God to love less means that God would give less, right? So to hate in this text is to love less, is to do less. Uh, let me give you an imagery, let me give you an imagery. Um, Man, a uh, man and a woman uh, gets married. Man and a woman gets married. The woman comes into uh, uh, to the family. He's excited. He said, hey, listen, uh, Christmas is coming up. Uh, Christmas is coming up. Thanksgiving is coming up. Uh, Fourth of July is coming up, whatever the case may be. Uh, he says, hey, listen, uh, the holiday is coming up. And he, uh, he, turns, uh, he turns to his wife and he says, uh, uh, we, finna go, we finna go to my mama's house. Gonna go to my mama's house, and uh, he gets to the he gets to his mama's house. Uh, he brings his new wife, brand new bride. Uh, you can tell by the glow, uh, uh, brand new bride. She walks in, uh, and when she uh, when she walks in, uh, he uh, he greets his mama. He greets his mama. He greets everybody in. Introduces her, and uh, she said, "Okay, baby, it's just, it's time to eat." Uh, he goes to his mama's chair. He sits his mama's chair down, make sure she have what he, mama, you need anything else? Uh, she said, no, baby, I'm, I'm good. And then he just go sits down. Uh, there's a brother in here that still quite don't know what the problem. <laughs> still a brother in here that don't know what the problem is, what, what, what's wrong. Uh, he goes and sits down. Wife doesn't say anything. She kind of notices a little bit but he got a good heart, you know. They knew, ain't trying to start trouble, you know, trying to be his peace, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. And she just go and, and sit down. And so, uh, and, and realizing uh, as they were eating, uh, one of the, 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 the juice gets low. Hey Amen, the juice gets low. He said, uh, oh, I'm gonna go in the kitchen and, and go get some juice, go, go and get some juice. And so what he does is he goes in the, in the kitchen and he, uh, he pours his mama uh, some juice, and then he, he uh, sets the juice on the table and just passes it to his, to his wife. He said, you, you, you can get some juice. Uh, there's a brother in here that still don't quite know what the problem is. <laughs> still don't quite know what the problem is. She don't say nothing. It's, it's small. It, it ain't nothing to be fighting over, but, mm, it's, 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 a, it's a, sisters in here like, we talking after this. <laughs> it's small, it's, 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 it's just real small. Uh, at the, at the uh, end, he said, hey, listen, uh, they have an event, uh, we, we, can, we, we can be able to go to the movies. Uh, he said, mama, you wanna come? She said, yeah, baby, let me go uh, get my coat. He said, no, mama, I'm gonna go get your coat. He goes and go get his mama coat. He wrap his mama coat around, make sure she all set and go. And uh, he said, uh, he tells his wife, baby, let's, let's get ready to go. And she says, uh, I need to go get my coat. He said, yeah, it's in the, it's in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yes, it's in the bedroom. Uh, she goes and get her coat. They open the door. She walks out. Uh, he gets to the door. He opens the door, because that's how he was taught, he's a gentleman. He opens the door for his mama and uh, as his wife, because she had to go in the back room and get her coat, so she, so she was a little late. As she was coming out, uh, he was already at the car door and he had opened up that front door and he was putting his mama in the front seat. He was he said, he said, mama, come on, go ahead, get in there. And he was setting her in and making sure that she had everything. He, he closed her, the back door. And then he was going on to the, to the driver's side. His wife got to the car. He said, hey, baby, get in there. <laughs> Uh, there's still a brother in here that quite still don't know <laughs> what the problem is. And so, and so uh, when he got to the movies, when he got to the movies, uh, he paid for everybody's uh, ticket, he paid for everybody's ticket. He said, mama, do you want some, do you want some popcorn? Do you want some, she said, baby, give me a Sprite and uh, give me a large Sprite and, uh, and give me some caramel, uh, cause they doing different stuff now. She <laughs> said, Give me some caramel popcorn. He's like, I got it, mama. He goes and he gets the popcorn. He got the ticket. He's all right, let, let's go. And his wife is standing there. And uh, cause she just wanted a little goober. She just wanted some, <laughs> some little gummy bear. She just wanted, and, but he never asked. He, he had never asked. And so um, she started feeling some kind of way. Okay. Now I want to let you know something. I want to let you know something. And we almost done. 
You, I want to let you know something. According to scripture, he hasn't sinned. Okay, okay. I got one brother that said amen. <laughs> Everybody else just blinked. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't sin. He didn't sin. Um, according to scripture, according to scripture, he has not violated the ordinance of God, right? When he got that popcorn and didn't ask his wife. He didn't, he didn't violate an ordinance. But every woman in here knows that wife is feeling some kind of way. And it's not to say that you can't love your mama. But now that you married, you gotta love her less. And what, that, and what that love less means is, you now have to ask your wife first, and then your, and then your mama. There's probably a mama in here that's like, mm, I don't like what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, when when you, you, you have children, you have children, love your children, but you, you have to love your husband first before you consider your children uh, by, 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 by covenant, right? By, by covenant. It's not to say don't love your children. What it's saying is don't, don't feed your children and neglect your husband. Don't take care of your loved ones and friends and family members and you neglect your wife, right? Or you consider your wife second. So what God is saying is, hey, listen, if you want to be with me, that's, that's been the whole, if any man come after me, Jesus said, if you want to be with me, here's the thing, you got to give me your first fruits. I need to be the first thought of your day. You need to ask me first. You need to consider me first, and then you can go and deal with everybody else. Don't, don't go and take care of all your necessities and needs on your own, and then you think about me at the end of the day and say, oh yeah, let me give to the Lord. Don't come to worship after you gave the world the best of you, and then you come in here tired and sleepy because you've actually spent the best of you out in the world. He said, hey, listen, if you come after me, he that does not love father or mother or wife or children, brothers, sisters, yes, and then he says this, and even his own life, you don't even put you above me. Somebody said, Jesus, I'm going to love me. You can love me after you, you can love yourself after you love me. I ain't going to be uncomfortable. Hey, listen, he says, then, then that means we can't be together. Well, I don't like that. That's cool. I'm not trying to change you. I'm just saying we can't be together. All right? We can't be together. He cannot, look at the end of the verse. He cannot be what? I'm not saying you're not a Christian. What I'm saying is if your priorities are out of place and you got friends that you putting above Jesus Christ in your faith, you put your job and other activities that you have, you do more for the world than you do for Christ. You do more for the world than you do for the church. You do more for yourself. You take care of yourself and you make sure that you good and you wake up in the morning and you don't even consider Jesus. How can I glorify you and praise you and love you like I should? If that's not your thought, he says, you can't be my disciple. I'm not saying you're not in the family. What I'm saying is, as a disciple, we can't walk together. There are some people I refuse to go on trips with. It'll, it'll ruin our relationship. I'll meet you there. No, we can't drive in the same car. I don't like your attitude. You snore too loud. You give inside uh, 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 side seat directions. <laughs> Talking about it's too fast, hear her do it. You don't like my genre of music? Hey, listen, uh, I'm going to meet you there. What the Lord's saying is, I'm not saying you're not a Christian. I'm just not going to walk with you. Because I don't like 
how you keep putting me second. I need to be a priority in your life. Sometimes we treat God the same way the people we love treat us. Some of you are used to not being a priority, being chosen, not being respected, not being honored. You've gotten so used to people stepping over you, not thinking about you, not considering your schedule. And because you can get used to not being a priority and not knowing, you end up turning around treating God the way other people treat you. And so the person that you really love treats you like you number third, fourth, fifth, seventh on the list. My father would say like, when my father would call my name, he didn't care, for some reason, he didn't care what I was doing. <laughs> And then, uh, Lord forbid, and one thing we never did, I never gave my father the finger. Do y'all know the finger? One, one second, I'm, 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 I never gave him the one second. He took that as an offense. Matter of fact, if he said, come here, and he didn't hear the pattering of feet, like there's a certain time frame, like when I say, come, I need you to drop everything that you're doing and I need you to come. And if you don't come fast enough, he took that as an offense. Then he would transition my name to my gender. <laughs> Boy, didn't I tell? Right? Then, he would, because then he would identify my gender and let me know that he had called me. <laughs> Right? And so, and so, and so with that, how many times have God been calling you? You've known for a long time you need to pick it up and you need to do more for God. You own one week, you off the next. You praying one day and then he don't hear from you for three or four or five days. All last week, you never picked up your Bible. You never thought to study him or talk with him. You putting, God, I'm busy, I got a schedule. God, Lord, I got this to do. I, man, your, your schedule, God will shut your schedule down. Oh, you busy? God will take all your business, all your contacts. He'll shut all of that down because here's one thing God will not accept. I'll never accept being your number two. So I will always disrupt your life if I'm not in the right place. I need to be in the right place in your life. But God, I love my wife. I need to be above her. God, I love my husband. I need to be above him. Lord, when everybody left me, this friend was there, that's great, but I need to be above that friend. Well, you know what? In this season, everybody, everybody done, done their own thing. In this season, I'm going to do me and I'm going to take care of me. You take care of you after you take care of me. You don't even put yourself above me. Verse 27 and we'll close. Uh, I got to tell the truth. Uh, we're verse 29 and we'll close. <laughs> and, who, and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot what? You got to carry it. You got to carry it. You got to be willing to carry it. Verse 28. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sit if not down first, and counts the cost? Whether he have sufficient to finish it. I want to tell you on this morning, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. Amen. You have to be willing to pay the cost. Which one of you would start something or do something and you don't have enough to finish it? If you was gonna take a trip from here to Florida, what you wanna do is count the cost to make sure you have enough gas to make it there and back. Somebody says, today I want to be with Jesus. You want to be with Jesus? It's going to what? It's going to cost. For some of you, you're going to have to let something go. I don't know what it is, but on something, on today, you're going to have to let something go. 
There is someone that you're holding on to. There is something that you're holding on to. There is an ideology or a thought that you're holding on to that you value maybe more than God. And you got to ask yourself the question on this morning, what is it that I got to let go? I'm, I'm supposed to be much further along. I'm supposed to be more impactful. I'm supposed to be doing things at a greater level. But for some reason, I have been distracted. I have stumbled. I have, I have been carried away. I've engaged in things that actually was in the opposite of direction of God. The question is, what is it that you have to let go of? So this is what I want you to encourage you to do at the beginning of this new year. Do what he says. Sit down first. I want you to go home and sit down. Sit down first and count the cost. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to go here. I want to start this business. I want to be able to travel. Hey, you, you, you want to go to Hawaii next year? You can do it, but, but just follow the, the guidelines of God. Sit down. Sit down first. Encounter. You don't just, you don't just pop up at a, 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 at a car lot talking about, ooh, I want that car. Before you say you want that car, what, you, what they put a little sticker, they put a little sticker on that window. And what you want to do is you want to look at that little sticker. <laughs> and you got to ask yourself the question, do I have enough to pay for this? Lord, bless me with a new community next year of friends and family and loved ones. You know what you got to do? You got to sit down first and say, do I have enough integrity to cultivate the relationships I'm praying for. Um, some relationships require you to be honest and you're a liar. You don't have enough to pay for the relationship. You're gonna have to uh, go to Dollar General and get some truth. <laughs> you know, a little bit by little, you have to pay for some package of truth and, 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 and build that up. Some relationships require for you to be consistent yeah. and you're inconsistent. You don't have enough to pay for the thing that you say that you want. There are some relationships, they require for you to be on time. So, somebody don't have a clock. You don't even look at your clock. You just come in when you feel, right? There are some relationships, they require for you to be transparent. They, re they, re they require for you to be honest about your past. Some, re some relationships require for you, well, so sometimes the, that, that relationship is a business relationship. Sometimes it's, it's a job. Sometimes, sometimes it's a relationship uh, that, that you may be pursuing. It requires for you to be honest about your past and you can't hide that thing that you did in 89. And I know the summer of 17 was wild. And you gotta be honest and you gotta be transparent about where you come from. Some, some of the things that, you, that you're asking, it requires for you to be honest about your agenda. We live in a day and age where everybody questions why a person is engaging because I don't know what your secret agenda is and everybody is suspect of everybody else. Some of the things that you want are going to require for you to save money. And every dollar that you get, you spend it. And the thing that you're praying for and the thing that, that you're asking God for, you know what that means? That means you can't go shopping next week. You can't go shopping the week after that. You're gonna have to discontinue your Amazon account. No more UPS trucks pulling up. There's some stuff that you gotta let go. If you say you want this, sit down first and count the cost of what it means to get it. Lord, I wanna get closer to you. You can no longer sleep until seven and eight o'clock. You're gonna have to start getting up at five and six. You know, you know, you no longer can arrive and do now. Now you can't just work eight hours a day because you said you wanted this lifestyle. So you know what? You're going to have to go from eight hours a day and you're going to have to start working 14 hours a day. 
And I know what you're thinking. What about my show? You gotta let your show go. <laughs> and I know, I know you love your routine on Sunday. I know you, somebody says, uh, I love the church, but I don't know nobody here. Hey, you love the church and you don't know nobody here. And if your goal is you want to get to know something, then you know what? That means, that means you're going to have to adjust your schedule so that you can stay a little longer to get to know people. Like all the stuff that you say you want, it does have a cost connected to it. Sit down first, count the cost, and see if whether or not you are dedicated to pay for it. Other than that, stop complaining. I don't know why people do that. Hey, you might have to, the life that you want to live, it might require for you to be a little bit lonely. Not alone because Jesus will never leave you. But sometimes you got to walk away from people and deal with a season of loneliness to achieve the thing that you say that you want. I want to achieve this at the beginning of the year. Hey, you got to let McDonald's go. Because you know they do the little tea now they give us the thing. You got to let that, you got to let that go. Hey, ain't no more runs. You can't keep running to Chick-fil-A. You can't, you, hey, you can't keep doing this. You can't keep doing that. Hey, you staying up to two o'clock in the morning scrolling on TikTok. You will not have to start going to bed at nine. What I'm saying is whatever you say that you want, you can get it. Me and my brother was talking about a week ago. Most of us are about a week and a half from reaching our goals. Most of everybody in here, you're about a week and a half from reaching your goals. You're just not dedicated enough to pay for it. You can get closer to God. You can start saving money. You can get healthier. You can, whatever your goals are, if you would actually lock in and dedicate even the next week and a half to re you'll find out that doors will start opening because God is watching for those who are dedicated, not for those who wish. This is not Aladdin. And so with that, you have the opportunity to do things and live the life that God has called you to do. And when people see you, they will be like, how? So this is what the Lord wants. He wants more children of the light being an example so that other people can ask the question, how did you get there? And you know what comes out of your mouth? I'm so glad you asked. There's a God that I want to introduce you to. You need to be the type of person that whoever you're around, you're the one that's bringing them closer to God. Don't, don't make people have to get away from you in order to find God. You've been a Christian all this time. They had to break up with you or walk away from you and then they, they end up coming to Christ and getting baptized after they cut off your friendship. And you in Christ. And they say, you know what? I would have never seen Jesus as long as we would have hung around together because you would go to worship and then when I would hang out with you, you would hide your faith. The Lord knew that and sometimes God will allow confusion and chaos to go in because he knows some of my Christians are keeping other people from being disciples. So you have to dis disconnect. If you're here this morning, you are, matter of fact, you may know right now, I know exactly what I need to do. This is the part of our services is praying time. In order for you to give your life to Jesus Christ, you have to believe that he died for you, that he was buried and rose again. If you be willing to make the commitment and repent, you know what repentance is? Repentance is the courage to stop and go in a different direction. Do you want to go in a different direction this morning? Are you tired of being on the same road? A lot of people say, hey, new year, new me. Nah, it's the same you. <laughs> new year. <laughs> Don't be the same you. And if you'll be willing to be baptized, today you can have your sins washed away. Today, you can put Jesus Christ on in baptism. If you hear you are a Christian, and maybe you say, you know what? The way I've been talking and the people that I'm connected to, my schedule is not allowing me to be great with God. The things that I've been pursuing does not allow me to be. I've been putting other things over than God. Matter of fact, Brother Williams, my, my priorities are out of place. 
I need to reposition and put people in their rightful, and I need to be able to put God where he belongs. I've been disrespecting God by how I've been responding to the things and elements of my environment. I didn't put my job over God. I didn't put my relationships over God. I didn't put my friends over. I didn't even put my leisure time and my comfort times over God. Lord, I now need to adjust. And the first thing that I need to do every morning, God, I need to talk to you and put you first. I've been neglecting the word. I literally go days and weeks and never pick up my Bible. There may be some of you on this morning, you don't even own a Bible. Somebody say, well, I have it on my phone. Sometimes what is convenience is a stumbling block. You need to go buy three Bibles. Go put one in your car, put one in your house, and you need to put one in your bag whenever, wherever you go. It ain't gonna stop you from cussing, but at least you'll think twice about it. <laughs> Readjust your priorities and let's put God first. This is praying time. We are here coming to heal, help and restore church. Oh,